Welcome to my lecture online. In this playlist, we're going to talk about what we call the discriminant. The discriminant is part of the quadratic formula that we use to solve quadratic equations. So why do we talk about the discriminant and what's so special about it? Well, if we go take a look and see what the general equation looks like of a quadratic equation, we notice that we have these three constants, a, b, and c. They're called the coefficients of that quadratic equation. And now to solve for that quadratic equation, we use the quadratic formula, which is right here. Now notice the, the uh, portion that's underneath the radical, b squared minus 4ac, well, that is called the discriminant. And sometimes we use the letter d to indicate the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac. So what is the significance of that discriminant? Well, it turns out that once we have the quadratic equation, partially solved in this format. In other words, we plug in what's b, what's a, and what's c into this formula. Then we can look and calculate what's inside the radical, and depending upon on its value, we can glean some information from that. For example, if b squared minus 4ac, which is called the discriminant, is greater than zero, in other words, if that's a positive number, we know that there are two real solutions to that quadratic equation. But if the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, is exactly equal to 0, so essentially that goes away, then we know that x equals minus b over 2a, that means there's only one real solution. And if b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, in other words, a negative number, then there are no real solutions to that quadratic equation, there's only two imaginary solutions. Graphically, it means the following. If the discriminant, again, b squared minus 4ac, is a positive number, then, the, then the, um, the equivalent, or I should say the graph of the quadratic equation, crosses the x-axis in two places, which then indicates it has two real solutions. So either it looks like this, or it looks like this. It crosses the x-axis in two places, and there's two solutions. If the discriminant is exactly equal to zero, then there's only one solution, which means the quadratic equation, or the, the formula, or the graph, I should say, will look like this, where it touches the x-axis in only one point. Either the graph will open upward, or the graph will open downward, but again, it will only touch the x-axis in one place. So either the graph will look kind of like this, or look kind of like that, when there's only one solution, when the discriminant is equal to zero. And when the discriminant is a negative number, so there's no real solutions, that means the parabola will never cross the x-axis, so it'll open upward like this but not get all the way down to the x-axis, or it will open downward and not get all the way to the x-axis. But then if you take the mirror image of that graph, just kind of flip it over, so there's the mirror image, you see that the mirror image will touch or cross the x-axis in two places. Same over here, when we flip it over, we have that mirror image, it will cross the x-axis in two places. Those are what we call the two imaginary solutions, and they can be found, they'll include the letter i, which is the square root of negative one. So by calculating what the discriminant is equal to, and discovering that it's a positive number, equal to zero, or a negative number, we can then quickly conclude that there's two real solutions, one real solution, or no real solution, in other words, two imaginary solutions to our quadratic equation. Now you may say, okay, I've got that, that's simple, but there's other things we can learn from it as well. So we're going to show you some examples of how to apply it and some other things that it's really good for. So stay tuned and we'll show you the significance in more ways of the discriminant.